Hey guys, Derek here from a guy, a girl, and a camper van. So last spring, after completing our first full Canadian winter in our van, Paul and I decided to start looking at houses. We knew that we weren't ready to actually buy anything yet, but figured it would be good to at least know what was out there for when the time finally came. The earlier we started looking at eventual options, the more time we would have to do our research, figure out what we did and did not want in our future home, and make sure that we weren't gonna rush into anything down the road. We hooked up with a family friend who also just happened to be a real estate agent and gave him a list of our criteria. Now, given that we drove to his office in our current home, he knew going in that we were not gonna be his typical clients. He was used to hearing things like big house in the city, close to all the amenities, a backyard swimming pool, five bedrooms, and a home theater in the basement. But instead, our criteria went a little like this. We wanted a small house, energy efficient, preferably off-grid, and lots of land with a mix of open space for gardens and a forest to get lost in. You see, Paula and I have always been lovers of the outdoors. Prior to moving into our camper van and traveling by road, we used to spend most of our free time in the wilderness, traveling by foot. We hiked the 88 kilometer Western Uplands Trail in Algonquin Park, the 100 kilometer La Cloche Silhouette in Killarney, We've completed the Frontenac Provincial Park Challenge several years in a row by hiking their entire trail network of 160 kilometers in September and October. And even each set a record and earned that park's all season camper badges for completing at least one backcountry camping trip per month for 26 consecutive months. So it should come as no surprise that we've always dreamed of being able to wilderness camp in our own backyard. Our real estate agent pointed out that this would be a fairly tall order and that we'd likely have to compromise on a few of the items on our list, especially considering that our meager budget left much to be desired. But luckily for us, time was on our side and the longer it took, the more money we could save. We left his office and headed back to our little home on wheels, confident that our sacrifices would eventually pay off. Our agent began sending us properties that loosely fit our description but none of them were exactly what we were looking for. Most of the houses were too big, without enough usable land, and price tags that were far beyond what we would ever want to spend. We quickly realized that we were looking for something pretty atypical from the norm, and if we were gonna find it, we'd likely have to start doing the searching on our own. And so we did. Every couple of days, we'd sit down in front of the computer and start searching the listings. At first, there wasn't really much out there that interested us, but eventually, we found something that seemed to be perfect. It was a small cabin with one bedroom plus a loft, built with high efficiency logs on a sizable property. There were several outbuildings, including a small heated workshop, an open field just aching to be planted, and a private forest, complete with hiking trails. The house wasn't off the grid, but in many ways it had already been prepared for the future conversion to solar. It was a little bit more than we wanted to spend, but we decided to have a look anyway. At the very least, it could give us something to aim for in the future. So our agent set up a showing, and the following weekend, we headed out to the country to have a look. As we drove down the driveway, we liked the rustic feel of the exterior. And while the front yard would need some work, we were happy with a blank canvas. But when we stepped inside, our hearts sank. We knew we couldn't afford it, but this place was exactly what we had always wanted. It was small, but the open concept and cathedral ceilings leading up to the loft made it feel humongous. Sunlight poured through the large windows and the natural wood felt organic and safe and us. We explored the outbuildings, walked through the field, and briefly followed a trail into the forest. We paused for a moment to take it all in. Our senses filled with the sound of birds and insects, the scent of lilacs and apple trees in full bloom, and the cool breeze on our cheeks. It was our own little paradise, but it was also too much money, and so we left. Over the next couple of months, we continued our search. We visited several more homes, each with their pros and cons, but none of them felt quite as right as the first. We found another little cabin, but there was no space for a garden, and food self-sufficiency was one of our biggest goals. We found others that had loads of land, but were too far from our families and our jobs. Eventually, we decided to have our agent set up a second showing at what had become our dream home. 
with the intention of offering what we could afford and hoping that it would be enough. It was a long shot, but as Paula likes to say, if you don't ask, it's already a no. So we fired off a text message and anxiously awaited a reply with an appointment. But unfortunately, our appointment never came because the sellers had just received another offer and they'd accepted. It was off the market. For a moment, we were devastated, but we were also relieved. As much as we had really wanted that property, we knew that the timing wasn't yet right and it was more than we were really comfortable spending. Now we could put that place behind us and start looking for more realistic options. We explored all kinds of different angles. We looked at vacant land that we could build on over time, only to, to discover that it's nearly impossible to buy property without a house, unless you already have a house of your own as collateral. So next we found a perfect piece of land with a small and somewhat rundown cabin that we could fix up ourselves over the next couple of years. But we ran into similar difficulties with lenders. By the time our second full winter had come and gone, it was beginning to look like we were never gonna find what we were looking for and that our real estate agent's original assessment was correct. We were gonna have to compromise on some of our most basic requirements. But we hadn't spent two years living the most incredible, life-changing adventure just to settle now. But what if our greatest desires were just too much? What if everything we had worked for was in actuality, unachievable. What if it just wasn't in the cards? But then one Sunday morning while visiting her parents, Paula just happened to be flipping through the real estate section of the local newspaper. Discouraged by all of the cookie cutter homes with half million dollar price tags, she almost missed the once familiar listing for a small cabin with acreage. It was our dream home, seemingly and unexpectedly back on the market after almost a year since our first viewing and subsequent losing. As it turned out, the originally accepted offer was on condition of the buyers being able to sell their own house first, something which they had been having a lot of trouble doing. But the sellers were in no huge rush and so they allowed for a number of extensions on the deal. But eventually, after months of waiting, they got fed up. They let the final extension expire and then put the cabin back on the market just in time for Paula to notice it in the newspaper. So once again, we contacted our real estate agent to have him set up another viewing, just to make sure that it was as perfect as we'd remembered it. And once again, we knew the minute we walked through the door, we were home. So not wanting to lose the opportunity a second time, we quickly figured out what we were actually comfortable with spending. We put in an offer, and after a brief but nail-biting negotiation, they accepted it. It was ours. The nearly two years that we spent living in our camper van changed our lives in unimaginable ways. We embarked on an epic journey through every province and territory in Canada, met new friends along the way, and created enough memories to share together for an entire lifetime. We also gained a greater appreciation for a less materialistic and more minimalistic lifestyle and in doing so paid down our debts and saved up a modest but respectable down payment for an affordable property but most importantly by spending the first two years of our marriage on the road we learned that sometimes it pays to just take your time and enjoy the journey because home isn't just about where you're parked it's also about who you're with